Welcome back to New Day Northwest. You know, we don't talk with novelists very much on this show, but our next guest wrote a book talking about some real life topics that caught our attention. Portland author Willie Vlotten is the writer of The Night Always Comes, and we spoke with him about economic issues like housing affordability that influenced the plot of this book. All right, Willie, well, let's talk about your book, The Night Always Comes. What is the premise of this novel? I mean, it's it's about a working class family in Portland that um, are trying to buy their rental home that they've had for 30 years. It's a mother, adult daughter, and an um, adult de developmentally disabled brother. And they've kind of stuck together for the brother. And they have a chance to buy their rental home because housing prices have gone through the roof. And it's it's kind of about this the, the argument of can, can these kind of working class families survive gentrification in, in cities like Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, where they keep getting pushed out? Oh, I am so glad that you are addressing this topic because it is something that we all know is happening, but we need to talk about it more. And I like that a novel is telling this story. What inspired you to tackle these tough topics? A couple of things. I, I, I remember driving maybe five years ago down town Portland heading into into Portland and seeing there was over 15 cranes downtown yeah. meaning 15 new buildings going up yeah and then I noticed I have a little office in St. John's the north part of Portland and just from my window within five years I, I saw six apartment buildings go up and all them in three mom and pop stores across the street closed up because they sold out yeah. And then the, you know, the all, you know, as a writer, you get stuck a lot. So you walk, I walk neighborhoods a lot and, you know, you fall in love with these beat up little working class houses, old craftsmen. They're built for working class people. And all of a sudden they'd go up in less than three years, they'd go up yeah. like $150,000. And so you, you start getting this kind of panic. I, yeah. I think as a working person thinking, how do, how do people buy things that are this expensive and why are they so expensive? How do you ever get ahead? How do you, grab some of that wealth because that's the problem is more and more people are are not being able to have that american dream that wealth is is inattainable you mentioned the cranes the home prices going up i mean it sounds a lot like seattle what else do you think seattle and portland have in common well i, I do think that insane amount of growth and the disparity of of, of rich to poor i mean we both both cities are, are really struggling with homelessness so what's interesting is the tent cities of Portland started rising as the as the housing prices are going up yeah. and, and, and the neighborhoods are shifting so much. So to me, it all made me start waking up in the middle of the night trying to figure it out and, and worry. Yeah. Um, and, and that's so the novel has that kind of panic and, and worry to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the cities like even I grew up in Reno, Reno, is yeah. becoming a lot like that um, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland. Oh, San Francisco, yeah. yeah. It feels like everywhere you look, I see it on online and everyone's making jokes about it. You hear about pocket sales all the time. I mean, you just can't get your hands on a home. And, and it is a very nerve-making thing. You have a lot of anxiety. But is that what you hope people take away from the book or, or is it something else? Well, I was interested in what you mentioned earlier, the, the idea of the American dream, like, I was raised to believe that if the, the American dream was owning a house and that you were somebody if you own a house. And I think that's what made America so great is it was the first time that really working class people could own something, own houses. And so it's a huge part of our identity. And, and I think that has shifted in cities like Portland, Seattle, yeah. San Francisco, where, where that, that dream is just unattainable. Uh, if you work 24 uh, seven, it did, you know, for working class people, you, there's just not enough hours in the day you could work to afford a, a beat up $500,000 house. Yeah. True. And I also think there is a stigma attached to folks who don't own a home. I think that's something that, you know, especially here in Seattle, if you don't own a home, then you're clearly not successful. Maybe you shouldn't be trustworthy. Do you find that? Well, that's that whole idea that uh, if you're rich, are you better than than people right. that aren't rich? And 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 that's a thing that I think America's always kind of grappled with that idea of are you a better person if you're rich? Um, I mean, I do think we're all, you know, at least my generation, you were raised to believe that home ownership really set you apart and and really gave you really true things, security. Uh, it gave you a place that, that that was yours that you couldn't get pushed out of. Um, but all all that's changing. And, and yeah, I do think that today that idea that you're rich, you're better is something that I really 
try to talk about in the book. And thanks to Willie for sharing that with us.